Hello everyone, um, this is my presentation on my dissertation titled Does Psychoeducation Improve Mental Health? An investigation into the relationship that psychoeducation has with well-being, resilience and attachment. So welcome to my presentation. My name is Michael Pendlebury and I'm a student counsellor and I work for two organisations, um, Web and Talking Connections, doing counselling. And I like to see myself as an integrative counsellor, but I focus on psychodynamic gestalt and cognitive, something that uses psychoeducation a lot. And psychoeducation is what this uh, research is really about. And I wanted to see how effective it really is, and re research more into it, because it's something I use in my own practice a lot. So, um, the so first of all, here is our variables. Um, we focus on psychoeducation, resilience, well-being and attachment, trying to see the effect that psychoeducation has on these three. So first of all, psychoeducation is a method to educate clients on psychology, counselling and mental health. It improves the client's ability to manage their own mental health. And it can branch out to more than just clients. It can also be students. It can be the general public by using apps and websites that can help teach about mental health. Resilience is the ability to maintain stability and positive emotion in times of adversity. Well-being is life satisfaction, happiness and good mental health. And attachment styles are um, separated into secure and insecure attachment. And it's basically the type of behavior people display in their relationships. So it's um, either secure or preoccupied, dismissive, and fearful. So, an introduction to the background literature of this study. First of all, the use of psychoeducation as a treatment method improves well-being in various populations, including people with schizophrenia, people in care homes, people with mental health issues. Second of all, the intervention of psychoeducation training program improved resilience and mental health. And finally, secure attachment is associated with improved mental health and quality of life. This kind of leads to our research question. This is, does education on psychology, counselling and mental health have a positive impact on resilience and wellbeing? And the second part of this is, does this education influence a person's style of attachment? So our hypotheses were, there will be a positive relationship between level of psychoeducation and wellbeing. Um, there'll be a positive relationship between level of psychoeducation and resilience. So that means the higher someone's psychoeducation, the higher their well-being and resilience. Finally, we hypothesise that secure attachment will be associated with higher level of psychoeducation compared to insecure attachment. Also higher level resilience and higher level well-being. So, our methods. So we took a sample of 46 participants, 21 were students, 25 were non-students. We advertised online using social media and using emails. Um, so we used an opportunity sampling method. We tried to get a broad range of both students and non-students to, to better represent the population. So we completed four questionnaires and these represented the four scales that I went over previously. So first of all, there's the adult attachment questionnaire, measuring attachment. Um, this puts the participant into either secure, preoccupied, dismissive or fearful attachment based on their results. And it says there what the results are, but secure is associated with high, close dependence and low anxiety. So close dependence is level of closeness to other people and level of dependence you have on others. And it's a score from one to five and the cutoff point is three. So if it's higher than three on close dependence, lower than three in anxiety, that's secure attachment. So um, for wellbeing, we measure using the Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale. For resilience, we use the Resilience Evaluation Scale. And then finally, for psychoeducation, we use a scale that um, was created by one of the researchers of this study, which we call the Psychoeducation Scale. So here's the first part of it. If you look at the image, um, people just complete um, answering yes or no if they've heard of these top, um, definitions. Um, if they've heard of these terms, sorry. And there's 30 of them. 
and this is the first part of the scale. There's another part which gives them the definitions of these terms and they are asked if they practice or engage or experienced in any of these uh, terms. So take, take for example mindfulness. On here it says have you heard of it? The second part will give the definition of mindfulness as a method of grounding yourself and focusing in on the present moment with an element of meditation and asking if they practice that. The score is between one and two, one for no, two for yes. So a higher an, an, an average score is calculated and a score closer to two indicates a higher level of psychoeducation. So the results, first of all, we found that there was a significant effect of psychoeducation on well-being, which basically means that there's a positive relationship between scores of psychoeducation and scores of well-being. It shows that higher knowledge of psychoeducation terms and definitions is related to improved well-being. Secondly, we run a regression for psychoeducation on resilience, finding another significant result, um, showing that higher level of knowledge of psychoeducation is related to improved resilience. Finally, we ran an ANOVA to look at attachment because this is where we separated the participants into categories. Now, if you look at the um, graph, you'll see there's a borderline category. This is one created by the study itself, and it represents. Um, so if you look at the, um, the previous slide that talked about uh, the higher than three on anxiety, lower than three in close dependence, borderline indicates if they got a score of exactly three. So the original um, adult attachment questionnaire would remove them participants. We decide to include them and create the category called borderline. This indicates the borderline between secure attachment and fearful attachment because it got exactly three. So um, we run an ANOVA, which measures the means of psychoeducation across each attachment style, depending on where the participant is in each category. So for psychoeducation and attachment, this ANOVA was not significant. And if you look at the error bars, there's a lot of overlap, which indicates there's no significant difference between the means of psychoeducation across the attachment styles. For well-being and attachment, we did find an effect of, um, we found that the ANOVA was significant, indicating that there is a significant difference between the means. And when we're in the post hoc, we found that um, secure attachment was significantly higher than fearful. And it's secure attachment is the highest mean overall. So secure attachment has the highest level of well-being and it's significantly higher than fearful attachment. We can also see that the borderline category and preoccupied attachment also have a significantly higher well-being than fearful attachment. We found a similar result for resilience as the ANOVA was significant and we found that secure attachment was significantly higher than fearful attachment and overall had a higher mean than all other attachment styles. So this indicates that for both resilience and well-being, Secure is the highest well-being and resilience, and fearful has the lowest level. So um, for our hypotheses, the first two were supported because we found that there's a significant positive relationship with, with levels of psychoeducation and resilience and well-being. However, our last hypothesis, which was that um, psychoeducation would, um, secure attachment would have a higher level of psychoeducation, this was not supported. We didn't find any significant difference um, in means for psychoeducation score across participants level of attachment. However, we did find that secure attachment was related to better well-being and better resilience on average. So what does this mean, these results? What does this tell us? So the main take home message of these results is that psychoeducation has a positive impact on mental health. We've used resilience and well-being as an indicator of mental health. So this suggests that psychoeducation should be used more, both in counselling with clients and perhaps in the classroom, um, suggesting that maybe we should teach this more to people in schools because it's related to better wellbeing and resilience, which 
could suggest a better level of mental health. Secondly, um, it supports previous research and previous areas of psychology which have advocated for educating people about psychology. The main area I'm on about here is positive psychology, which there is a part of positive psychology that Seligman wrote about, which he called positive education. So as a little overview, I've got an image here showing that positive psychology strategies is basically about focusing on positive aspects of your life and positive mental health. Also, it's very related to well-being, which is one of our scales. So, for example, it's like goal setting, maybe writing three things down at the end of the day that were positive, um, writing things about relationships you have with people, like your family members that are positive. It's all focusing on the good things that have happened in your life. Very related to well-being too. So our results support this. First of all, because we found that psycho psychoeducation is related to better well-being which is what Seligman was saying about positive education. And additionally, we found that it was related to better mental health, better resilience, which can imply that psychoeducation could improve people's mental health. And it suggests that using something, using positive psychology in a classroom would also be beneficial because it's linked to a psychoeducation. Finally, for attachment, we did not find that psychoeducation had an effect on a person's um, attachment style and this suggests that unlike well-being and resilience attachment is more of a stable characteristic and it's more unchangeable and it's more personal almost and it's something that education will struggle to influence it also suggests that attachment which previous researchers have said is based in childhood and is very it's malleable it's not very malleable in adulthood which which is why we didn't find a significant difference in people's psychoeducation score across attachment styles because it's it suggests that the psychoeducation will not change a person's style of attachment it's based in childhood and it's more of a personal characteristic and there is previous research that suggested that psychoeducation could be used to help attachment issues in people but we found that we don't really support this research because we found that um, a person's attachment style will not change if their level of psychoeducation is higher. And it was the only score, um, the only um, variable for us where secure attachment was actually not the highest, um, didn't have the highest score of um, psychoeducation. And none of the differences were significant. Um, however, we found that secure attachment was associated with improved well-being and improved resilience. Um, and this shows that secure attachment is associated with a better quality of life and um, secure attachment is associated with low anxiety and high closeness and dependence on others. So this suggests that this is almost like um, something we should um, look towards almost in our attachment. We want low anxiety and high closeness and dependence because it's associated with better resilience and better well-being. Additionally, fearful attachment we found had the lowest score um, of resilience and well-being. And I think this is um, likely due to the high anxiety and the low closeness and dependence on others. So it's almost like very anxious person, but they're not seeking help for it and they don't they isolate themselves. And this is associated with the lowest resilience and the lowest well-being. So overall, the lowest quality of life, which previous research has supported, suggesting that fearful attachment is associated with higher rates of depression and higher rates of things like depersonalization too. So the take home message of this whole study is that psychoeducation is extremely beneficial and we should encourage its use more. And counsellors should be encouraged to use it more in their practice as a method to help teach their clients more about mental health, more about ways to manage their own mental health, more strategies such as mindfulness, all that stuff, like everything to do with psychology, um, mental health and counselling really is very beneficial to people's well-being and resilience. We've also found that um, counts, um it's not only counsellors should be used in the classroom more, perhaps taught to people at a young age in uh, school classrooms. Um, 
could potentially really benefit their mental, mental health because we found an increase in their resilience and well-being. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation and I will answer any questions I receive in the comment section of this video.